What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Adventures in Drunk Fish Keeping. That is refreshing. Tonight's brew is a simple uh, Blue Moon Honey. This is a simple wheat beer with a little bit of honey splash. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice fish keeping beer. So, if you guys have been watching the channel for a while or even recently, you may have heard that I live in Wilmington, North Carolina. Now, if you watch the weather, you know that Wilmington, North Carolina is going to experience a Category Two hurricane tomorrow. It's kind of similar to last year when we had Hurricane Florence. Uh, except I'm doing some stuff different this year as opposed to last year. Um, one, we're most likely going to be staying through this one because it doesn't look like it's going to be quite as bad as last year's. Uh, two, we're doing some additional tank prep that we didn't do last year because, well, to be honest, we kind of got rushed. So, number one, what do you do when you know you're not going to have power to your tank for more than a few hours? Well, the one thing you need to keep in mind is that your fish and your coral can do without your lights for several days, maybe even a week or two, without a lot of detriment to them. Uh, the coral may experience a lot of cutback and may take a while to recolor, but they won't die-die. Your fish won't die. They can deal with the dark for a little while. It's not going to hurt their feelings. They may freak out when everything comes back on, but that's where acclimation comes back in, just dialing everything down and bringing them back up. So. You're not really going to kill anything there. But what do you do to keep oxygen in the tank? What do you do to keep the tank going when you may not have power for multiple days? Uh, battery powered air stones um, like this. Uh, this is a bubble box. Got an Amazon, seven, eight bucks. Takes a deep battery. It's probably going to run for about you know, 30, they say 36 to 44 hours on one D battery. So, you know, buy you a couple of these and a sleeve or two of D batteries. And you should be able to achieve this. Just straight bubble action. Getting some oxygen in the tank. Depending on how many batteries you buy for at least, you know, a few days or more, depending on your situation. But that's when you don't have power. What do you do before you have power? So that comes into a couple things. And I'm gonna show you guys the tank while I talk about this. So one of the things you want, probably wanna do is you want to, if you know you're gonna go into a no power situation for a couple days, is before that time, feed a little bit heavier, dose, do everything you need to do to get everybody in the tank fed and happy before uh, the day comes. Now the day before, it wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and do a good solid water change, clean your glass, change, and if you got any media such as carbon purigen that's starting to get a little bit old, go ahead and put some fresh in there so that everything kicks back on, you're not cycling out crap water again, you got fresh in there to combat all the crap that's going to build up. Um, a good filter sock change, not a bad idea. Um, wouldn't hurt to run your power heads uh, for a few days beforehand, a little bit higher than you normally would, just if there's any extra detritus floating around there, so you can get it churned up. Now, if you're gonna go without power for, you know, a few days or more, I would not feed during that time. If you have to feed, feed exceptionally light. Like, you know, for me, I've got a bunch of tangs, so I would probably wanna feed maybe, and we're just throwing this out there, maybe you wanna feed once every other day and a little bit of pellet nothing crazy don't put a lot of flake don't put a lot of meat in there a little bit of pellet as soon as everybody gets a bite or two let it go you know if you fed them thoroughly beforehand or been feeding them good you shouldn't really have a lot of issues with fish not having proper nutrients but what you don't want to do is overfeed a tank and run into a situation with a high nitrate spike and a lot of extra junk in the tank that your filter media is gonna to have to overcome the second power comes back on. It wouldn't be a bad idea too to go ahead and have your power head set to a lower setting so if power does come back on, you're not blasting the tank and stirring up a bunch of junk right off the bat, but that's each their own. Another thing I would recommend if you're going to go into a situation without power for several days is to take the time beforehand to go ahead and do any type of tank maintenance. If you got Aptasia, if you've got any type of pest, treat it then, treat it before. Do your big water change. Do whatever you have to do beforehand 
So by the time you do go into a no power situation, you've given everybody in the tank the best habitation they can have for a few days, maybe even a week, before they get normal operating conditions back. And this will guarantee success. Now, I'm not saying you're not gonna lose a fish. The chances you lose a fish, uh, especially larger fish, over the course of a couple of days, it's very possible. And I'm not saying it's not gonna happen, but these tips will help you have a little bit more success in not losing fish right off the bat. Another thing I'd recommend, and this is really the big kicker, is pay attention to what's going on in your tank when there's no power. If you see certain fish struggling, breathing heavier, things like that, if you can get in there and agitate the water some, get a, a larger spoon or a ladle, turn, turn the water for a little while, help bring some of what's at the bottom up to the top, because that's the effect of a power head, that may help you out in the situation and you may end up not having fish die, but that's where you need to look into it. You need to put a flashlight on it, whatever it may be, see if you got fish struggling. If they're, you know, like, we'll take my powder blue. If I go two days without power and I see him in a corner laid up breathing hard, that means he's not getting the oxygen he needs. So I gotta turn that water. If I gotta do it for an hour or two a day and get that water turned back up to keep him alive, it's well worth it to not lose a prized fish. Not to mention it's well worth it not to lose all the inhabitants of your tank, but it does help. So, in general, small prep tips up front can help you out in the end. Um, I know if you're a person who maybe lives in a hotter climate like I do, maybe having a couple freezer bags or water bottles, yeah, water bottles full of frozen water can help you regulate those tank temps if the stuff gets too hot. You can always drop a bottle in there and cool it off to help out. It's not going to help tremendously, isn't? It's not going to bring the water temperature back to perfect, but it may help keep everything from completely frying in your tank. So, that being said, this is Adventures in Drunk Fish Keeping signing off, uh, getting everything set up for the next day, and I'll let you guys know how we fare in the storm after everything's said and done. Bye.